Hello again. Good to see you. Please sit down. You're making me nervous. Oh, I've been sitting all day. Uh, but if one of us stands, it disturbs the equality of our power relationship. Oh. Uh, we might have a nice friendly chat between equals, don't we? I guess so. We can't be allowing this relationship to get competitive, because that would be threatening. <sighs> Well, this is better than my so-called ergonomic chair. What a monstrosity. It's like something from a torture chamber. My back aches and my neck is killing me. How long, how have we been since our last visit? Oh, don't ask. Then you'll have to tell me in your own way, in your own words, or else you'll be wasting your time. And my money. Yes, that too. It's always the same, isn't it? Meaning? I'm stuck. You want to block? I suppose so, but it's... It's more than that. Yes. The causes of writer's block are many and varied. Well, I started writing to exercise my demons, I suppose. That's what it motivates most writers, the good ones anyway. Writing helps us to get the things that bother us off, perpetual relay. We, we write to manage our obsessions. But what if writing becomes an obsession? There's a risk of that. I'm, help, I'm here to help you control your obsessions. It's what I do. I specialise in treating writers. Trust me. So, was it about your childhood? How did you feel about your mother? <sighs> Haven't we already done this? Oh, right, I suppose we have. Weeks ago. Months, years more like. <laughs> when the problems are deep-seated, it takes a long time to tease them out and deal with them one by one. You must be patient. I have been patient and I don't seem to be getting any, any better. These things take time. But you can do it. You know you can. I suppose so. Why don't we start with you telling me about your current project? Well, I'm not in a pitch for a, a reality TV series. Sounds interesting. Tell me more. <laughs> well, it's kind of like Big Brother. But instead of ordinary social misfits, the room is full of psychotherapists. This is interesting. <laughs> well, you see, the idea is that these psychotherapists are all supposed to be completely under control, unflappable. At first, they seem to behave courteously. But after days and days of constant exposure to each other, their professional veneer wears off. They begin to snipe at each other. At first, it's Freudians against Jungians. And then both grew to beat up on the humanicists. Oh, factional infighting. I like it. Then certain men try to dominate individual women. But the women retaliate by ganging up on the men. Ah, the battle of the sexes. But surely there must be sexual attraction. <laughs> well, yes. And jealous rivalries break out when the two men fancy the same woman or the two birds go after the same bloke. This is reality TV full of biologically driven conflicts. I suppose the therapists start analysing each other, they probe and exploit each other's vulnerabilities. Exactly. At first, the various groups cooperate to vote out members of other persuasions, but eventually, even like-minded colleagues come to conflict. Alliances shatter. Fascinating. As the series progresses, the psychological problems that drive the therapists into the professionism re-emerge. They begin to act like ordinary, messed up people, except they're much smarter and more capable of destroying each other. So, then what happens? The cosmic layer of civilization erodes. It's like Lord of the Flies. And it happens on TV in front of millions. How do people react to all the stress? Neurotics start washing their hands 20 times a day, stuff like that. Yes, yes, I see what you mean. Oh, and the psychotics, oh, oh, they really provide some dramatic stuff. The mind boggles. It'll be great entertainment. I'm sure. This sounds like a marvellous idea. Why are you having trouble with it? It's the same old bugaboo. Hmm? I try to tell myself I have great ideas, and I have all the talent I need to bring them into life. Mm -hmm. But those doubts keep coming back. Mm -hmm. I have these characters in my mind, see. Right. In my mind, they live. But when I write them down, they just don't seem to be alive. They just lie there on the page, dead. Mm. Every morning, I reread what I wrote the day before. And I can't tell if it's brilliant or rubbish. I begin to question my talent, date my critical judgment. 
So I struggle. If I can't be a writer, I can't be anything else. I'm not fit for any kind of other work. So what else should I do? Tell me, please, what else should I do? Well, are you listening to me? Hello, are you there? <laughs> I'll leave you there. What? Oh, is it time? <laughs> what on earth are you writing? <laughs> I'm just fleshing out an idea for a TV show. <laughs> you stealing my idea? No. Improving it? What gives you the right to work with my idea? Do you really think you're competent to deal with an idea like this? But it's my idea! This project requires a specialised experience, expertise and insider's knowledge. You couldn't possibly develop it properly. But I thought you were supposed to help me! I am helping you. I'm saving you from your inevitable failure and your obsession. Run along now. I need to wash my hands. Oh. Have a good week! Miss Jenkins, cancel my appointment for the rest of the day. I'm, I'm going to work at home. I must write this while it's still fresh in my mind. If I don't do it now, I won't be able to concentrate on anything else. Well, we wouldn't want my clients to think I'm obsessive, would we? Good afternoon, Miss Jenkins. Would you mind tidying up a bit? Oh, and please sharpen my pencils. Miss Jenkins? Miss Jenkins, what are you writing? And I'm alright, standing.